Hello everyone, I hope you are enjoying the Level Up series and here again I am with a very interesting problem from one of the famous physicists, Jan Kalda kinematic sheet and uh, let's try to attack this problem. But before we go ahead in this problem, we, let me tell you a theory which is involved in this particular problem and the theory is called the theory of shortest distance. If you have already solved that, uh, take some time and uh, try to solve this question if you know the theory of shortest distance. But those who don't know the theory of shortest distance, first understand this theory and then try to solve the problem on your own and then see the approach how I am trying to solve that problem. So the shortest theory says, let me take an example that a particle is moving along the x axis with a velocity Va and another particle is moving along y axis with a velocity Vb. And let's say the initial separation between these two particles is d. So there are multiple approaches to find the shortest distance during the course of the motion. The first approach is calculus approach. And I would request each one of you to pause this video and solve it using calculus. But I am going to use a concept of relative velocity. And this is the same concept I am going to apply in the above problem. So relative velocity says that if you move in one of the frame of reference, so let's say I move in the frame of reference of A. So for me, this A comes to rest because I subtract the same velocity from this and I subtract this same velocity from the entire world because that is the concept of relative velocity. And now in this scenario, for me, A is at rest and it will seem like the B particle is moving in the direction which is the resultant of A and B in the direction which I am showing over here. Now I will ask you a question that what is the shortest distance? What is the shortest distance between a point between a point and a line? Now if I ask you this particular question, I know it's a pretty simple answer that if you drop a perpendicular from a point because this is a point it is stationary and now if i drop a perpendicular from here this perpendicular becomes the shortest distance so this perpendicular line becomes the shortest distance now how to calculate it we can simply use trigonometry to find our answer trigonometry says that if this is the angle alpha let's say this is alpha so tan alpha can be easily defined, tan alpha can easily be defined by uh, a component of velocity which is uh, not adjacent to this angle which is Va upon component of the velocity which is adjacent to the angle. It is sine by cos. Okay, So Va by Vb and once this is defined, I can find out sine alpha and cos alpha. So this is Va, this is Vb. And this will be underscore Va square plus Vb square. And this is angle alpha. So you can calculate the cos alpha and sine alpha. And for here, if this is D, clearly this shortest distance is shortest distance will be equal to shortest distance will be equal to D of sine alpha. And this will be equal to D into sine alpha will be here. Va upon underscore of Va square, Va square plus Vb square. Okay, so this will be shortest distance. Sometimes the question which is asked is find the time to reach the shortest distance. Time to reach the shortest distance. Now it is also easy. Once you know the concept, the question becomes pretty easy. It is distance upon uh, the speed or velocity in that direction. So this distance, which is d cos alpha. So this distance is d cos alpha. This is the distance when it reaches the shortest distance. This is the uh, length which is traveled and d cos alpha upon the resultant velocity and resultant velocity is Va square plus Vb square. So clearly I can easily say d cos alpha, d cos alpha is d v b upon cos alpha is this and it will be v a square plus v b square. 
so this will be the answer or time taken to reach the shortest distance i hope you should practice this before attempting the question again so let's see the question again here it says there are two particles moving on two different inclined planes but it is constructed in such a way that their angles are same okay the angles are same now what it says that it uh, takes t1 time for the first ball to reach over here and it takes t2 time to second ball to reach over here so i can clearly say let's say this length is s1 length and this length is s2 length so s1 can easily be calculated because the initial velocity is zero i can calculate the s1 length as half into acceleration into t square because initial velocity is zero so the acceleration along the incline will be equal to half acceleration is simple acceleration component will be equal to g sine of alpha for particle a so i will write down g sine alpha into t and it is given that it is t1 square so i will put this one so this is s1 and similarly i can calculate s2 s2 will be all will be similar the acceleration in this direction is equal to again g sine alpha because of the construction of this inclined plane so it will be half uh, g sine alpha into t2 square okay it is given that it takes t2 time for the second particle to reach and therefore i can calculate the length ab also so ab this is the length and why i am calculating i will show you in just minutes time ab will be equal to s1 minus s2 uh, that will be the length ab because of the construction the length s this length and this length is same because it's an isosceles triangle so clearly i can subtract s1 minus s2 uh, and it will give me the length ab and this will be equal to half g sine alpha and it is t1 square which is the greater time because it is taking more time and it minus t2 square okay so clearly you found a, a b now how to approach uh, this problem let's go in the frame of reference of a okay so let me just like the previous case i will go in the frame of reference of a so now both the particle this particle and this particle both have initial velocity as zero but there is an acceleration so the acceleration is in this direction let's say this is a and there is another acceleration which is in this direction for the another particle a b particle which is in this direction let's say a and you have seen that both the accelerations are same and they are g sine alpha if i sit in this particular frame of reference relative acceleration which will act will be in this particular direction like this and therefore on this particle b there will be two accelerations one along the incline and one acceleration a uh, in the upward direction of the other incline so clearly if now the question becomes easy peasy you should try it again if you have not tried it uh, before so please pause this video try it again and tell me the answer in the comment box but otherwise i will just go ahead hopefully you have actually tried it now let's look at this so clearly from the symmetry you can see uh, this angle was given to you as alpha so this will be also alpha and obviously this angle is given to you as alpha and therefore this is also alpha so uh, basically this will be two alpha and alpha and alpha so now from symmetry you can see the net acceleration is in this direction a net and it will be equal to a net relative acceleration okay so it will be equal to this is g sine alpha and this is uh, plus g sine alpha so these two will be added along the this axis and there will be no acceleration in the y axis because it will be zero in this direction it will cancel out so g sine alpha g sine alpha and its component along the x axis which is cos of alpha and therefore this will be equal to 2g sin alpha cos alpha so you have got this okay so we have got the a net now let's look at this problem again let's make this triangle and this particle b with respect to a now is moving in which direction it is moving along this direction and obviously it will travel along this direction the shortest distance between a point and a line in which this 
B particle is moving is this particular distance or oh, clearly and you can find this because this is alpha this is a b length from here and here and therefore we calculated a b and this will be equal to a b sine alpha and if shortest distance was to be found you could have calculated a b sine alpha but here it says at what time was distance between the ball and the ball smallest so obviously it is asking about the time so this is a b cos alpha and time is equal to similarly uh, we can calculate from this s relative s relative which is this particular distance is equal to half a relative into t square and therefore s relative is a b cos alpha and it is a b you have calculated let me just put half g sin alpha into t1 square minus t2 square this is a b you have already calculated s relative okay now into cos alpha because a b cos alpha is this and this is equal to let me change the pen this is equal to half a relative which is 2 g sin alpha cos alpha into t square okay so 2 this half half gets cancelled g sin alpha cos alpha g sin alpha cos alpha gets cancelled and finally we will have let me just take it t square is equal to t1 square minus t2 square upon 2 this is the extra factor and therefore t will be equal to let me write the answer here t is equal to under root of t1 square minus t2 square upon 2 so you can easily find this answer i hope you have understood it and if you have liked this concept please give me a thumbs up share it with as many friends as possible and Keep following this channel for many more challenging problems and unique way of solving it. And I will be trying to take concepts behind each problem so that you are well versed exactly how to apply these concepts whenever these type of problems arise. Okay, so all the very best and keep working on your problems and keep making your mechanics strong. Physics is beautiful. Physics is love and you should definitely involve yourself in physics to actually take your level higher. Thank you, Bacho, for watching this video.